All right, guys, today we're going to be diving into the world of pool chemicals, chlorine specifically. Keeping your pool sparkling clean and safe for the kitties to swim in does require maintaining the proper chlorine level. But with different choices out there, how do you know which one's the best one for you? Well, no worries. Today we're going to break down the three most popular types of chlorine used in swimming pools, tablets, granules, and liquid. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Ben from Clover Pool Care, and over the past 20 plus years, I've helped thousands of pool owners take the stress out of owning a pool, and now I'm here to help you. So stick around to the end of the video, and I'm gonna to reveal to you my own personal preferences and the routine that I use every week. All right, so let's get into it. First up, chlorine tablets. All right, let's start with chlorine tabs. Some people call them chlorine pucks because they look like small little white hockey pucks. In the pool biz, we call it trichlor. These are slow dissolving discs that go inside of your chlorinator or feeder, not inside your skimmer. You know who you are. Stop doing that. Stop it. The tabs release chlorine slowly and steadily over time, making them a great option for long-term, low maintenance chlorination. So here are some pros and cons to consider. First up, the pros. They are very easy to use. You pretty much just drop them in and forget about it. They're very cost effective over time. They have cyanuric acid in them, which your pool does need to help the sun from breaking down the chlorine. They work well for maintaining a smooth, consistent chlorine level due to the slow dissolving aspect. Now to the cons. All right, first major con is that it does have stabilizer in them and people typically overuse them. If you're using trichlor as your major source of chlorine, you need to keep a very close eye on your cyanuric acid level. High levels of cyanuric acid can have a negative effect on your chlorine levels. I like to keep my pools around 50 to 60 parts per million. Next, they dissolve too slow for any kind of boost of chlorine. They also have a very low pH, usually about 2.8 to 3.5 on your pH scale. Now when overused, like I said, this is usually the number one reason why I see a lot of pump seals that are leaking. I even see this bad behavior out of other so-called pool guys. And finally, it is the most expensive of the three that we're going to talk about today. All right, next up we have granular chlorine, aka calcium hypochlorite, CalHypo for short, also known as pool shock. No. Let's clear this up for you real quick. Shock is not a noun. To shock your pool is a verb. It's an action. So stop calling granular chlorine shock. That's how pool rookies talk. Shocking your pool is the process of rapidly increasing the chlorine level to kill the algae and the bacteria and other contaminants. If your chlorine level drops due to heavy swimming or hot weather like this, granular chlorine can get it back in the range very fast. So here's a quick breakdown of the pros and cons of granular chlorine. Here's the pros. It is fast acting and effective for shocking your pool because it raises your chlorine level very quickly. It does not have any effect on your cyanuric acid levels. There is no cyanuric acid in it. It is easy to transport versus liquid. It's about the same as transporting the tabs. We'll get to that in a minute. It also has a calcium byproduct, which you do need for your pool. Your pool needs calcium. And this can be beneficial if you live in an area with lower calcium concentration in the tap water. I'm lucky to live in an area of Florida with low calcium in the tap water, but I do know that there are other parts of the country where that is not the case. So here are the cons. It does require more frequent application than tablets. You're gonna have more spikes and valleys if you're using only granular. It can irritate your eyes and skin if not handled properly. And it can also be very dusty when you're scooping it and pouring it. So be careful not to inhale all that dust. I've probably inhaled way too much dust over the years and we're not sure exactly what the long-term effects are just yet. Also in the cons, it does have a calcium byproduct, which could be a bad thing if you live in an area with high calcium already in the tap water, as I mentioned a minute ago. If you live in an area like that, CalHypo is probably not gonna be the best choice for you, as calcium levels that are too high are gonna lead, lead to some other problems. All right, now on to liquid chlorine. Last but not least, we have liquid chlorine, 
also known as sodium hypochlorite. Why don't we say so hypo like we say cal hypo? I don't know, sounds cooler. This is a concentrated bleach solution that is the most potent form of chlorine for pools. Pool chlorine bleach is typically double the strength of regular laundry bleach. Like granular chlorine, it is great for shocking your pool. So here are some things to consider when using liquid chlorine. Here are the pros. It's very fast acting and effective. It can be used to adjust chlorine levels very precisely. This is why it's usually used in drip feeders, which can be very helpful in a public pool that needs constant attention, constant adjustments. It is also the cheapest of the three forms of chlorine we're talking about today. And it also contains no cyanuric acid. So here's the cons. It requires very careful handling due to its concentrated form. It's very, very messy. You need to protect your vehicle, protect your clothing. It'll ruin anything it touches pretty much. It can also irritate your skin and eyes, even more than granular chlorine, I think. It seems like just touching the freaking container will often leave your fingers smelling like bleach and feeling slippery all day. Ugh. It also has a very high pH of 13. It also has significant decomposition and storage. So if you have liquid chlorine, old jugs from last season, you need to go ahead and pour those into the pool because it's probably only a fraction of its original strength and it's time to go ahead and get some refills. Also, they're very bulky and it's hard to carry a lot at one time. If you're a pool service professional, you would literally have to have the whole back of your truck filled up with jugs just to get through one day in the summer around here. And that just takes up too much room for me. In summation here, the best choice for you is going to depend on your pool's needs and also your own preferences. For everyday chlorination, Tablets, slow dissolving tablets are a great convenient option. If you need to shock your pool and raise chlorine levels quickly, then granular or liquid chlorine is the way to go. Just remember to always follow the safety instructions on the product label, no matter which type of chlorine that you choose. All right, now as promised, I'm gonna let you in on my own personal preferences and how I run all of my pools. First of all, I never, ever, ever use liquid chlorine. It's just way too messy, it's too bulky, the pH is too high. I cycle back and forth between CalHypo and tablets. Now remember I talked about not overusing the tablets. I only use usually about three tablets per week in a regular 20,000 gallon pool. If it's a smaller pool, I'll use about two tablets a week. If it's a larger pool, I might go four or five tablets per week. The point is that I'm not filling the chlorinator all the way up to the top like some people like to do. Stop doing that. I use CalHypo for any quick adjustments or shocking needed to get rid of any algae or the funk from that pool party that you had. While doing this, I always keep a close eye on my cyanuric acid level. If it starts to get too high, it's time to back off the tabs a little bit and then switch over to Cal Hypo for a few weeks. Let the rain and the splash out from swimming, bring it back down, bring the uh, cyanuric levels back down to an appropriate level, and then I can go back to using tablets once again. I, like, like I said, I keep my cyanuric acid around 50 to 60 parts per million. Here in Florida, we do have pool service year round, so I take the opportunity in the winter off season to let my cyanuric levels let my cyanuric acid levels come back down to the underside of my range. That way, when summer comes back around, I can slowly build back up into it again. So there you have it. Please hit that little thumbs up down there and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.